Hi again and welcome to the Talking Bass Podcast. This week, Ellen is sitting down to talk bass with a metal bass legend, Frank Bello of Anthrax. Frank has been the bass player for Anthrax since 1984. As bass player for one of the big four thrash metal bands, Frank has made a huge impact on metal bass with his grinding tone and impressive fingerstyle technique. In this interview, Frank discusses how he got started as a bass player, talks about his biggest influences, his gear, and also delves into some of his extracurricular activities, such as his acting and his charity work. So, without further ado, let's join Ellen as she sits down to talk bass with a legend of metal bass playing, Frank Bello. Hello and welcome to the Talk of Bass podcast with me, your host, Ellen O'Reilly, and my guest today, the amazing Frank Bello. How are you doing, Frank? Wow. I'm well, Ellen. Thank you. Thank you for having me after all this time. It's been it's been a long time uh, trying to get this interview together. You know, we're in that in between thing. You go through your press, you press people because they say don't do anything on your own. I, it w- this would have been done a long time ago. Yeah. But because I'm a, I'm a fool and I listen to everybody, I say no, no, we'll set it up. But I can just talk. I know how to speak. It's okay. Yeah. Somewhat know how to speak. But long story short, we got it together, so I'm happy to be here. So thank you for having me. No worries, no worries. All right, Frank. Well, how I like to begin these conversations is like, I always want to know, how did someone get into bass in the first place? You know, how did it all start for you? Great question. You know, um, for for me, I have a passion for bass from way back. Um, I was, I originally started when I was 13 years old. Um, that was a few years ago, you know, because I'm now I'm only 19, so it's it's pretty easy the way it works. But um, I, I started when I was 13, um, and I was playing rhythm guitar, jamming with who is the drummer of Anthrax, Charlie Benanti. We grew up we're we're family, uh, we're related, so we grew up in the same house. I was playing on rhythm guitar. I when I we were jamming songs all the time, and I played. I just so happened to hear the bass parts. And I, I learned the bass parts, but I was playing rhythm guitar. So Charlie would see me jamming and he'd be playing guitar or drums. And he said, you're playing the bass parts. Why don't you just switch to bass? And it was as easy as that because when I hear a song, <clears throat> I go immediately, even now to this day, I go straight to the bass and I hear, I kind of separate everything. And it's just the way my head works, my ears work. I hear bass first. And with the bass player, I always found that interesting to where he's going or she's going in the song what kind of moves and how they're helping the song. So I always found that really interesting. And my fingers just automatically just come out and play whatever. If I'm playing guitar, I'll hear the bass first. It's just the way it is. And I still love that, that for some reason, my mind works like that because it's just drawn immediately to whatever I hear bass. And then the guitar, then the vocals come in. It's crazy. But I, I'm, I'm very fortunate for me. I, I love working like that. Yeah. So you're a born bass player then. Well, I think so. You know, I, I, it just came out that way. And I love, I love bass players to begin with. That's why we're all a community thing. But uh, I, I love just where it could take a song. I think it's very important. I think it's underrated. We, we all know that. But uh, I just love it. even the simplest bass lines. Uh, I just love because it fills up, you know. I mean, it, it's just such, it's the basis of a song. Basis of a song. I, I just love... Um, I, I love it to this day. I love it more now than ever because I love the challenge uh, of of learning. I love the challenge. I don't think you ever stop learning. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a student. I'll be a forever student with bass. I never want to stop learning. I don't think I know half the things I want to know. Uh, and I think that's where the drive comes from, to be honest. I, I, I ne- I'll never say I'm, I'm good enough. I always want to keep trying to get to another stage and learn from a different player. I don't care what kind of music it is. I love music all musics and I think you can learn from anything you know I think that's the way to be have an open mind to everything absolutely so who are your favorite bass players like initially you know funny enough and I've said this in the book um Joel's told you about the book I'm sure um my my heroes see when I grew up I, I kind of my dad took off when I was young so I needed like heroes to go and to to focus on so my heroes were bass players uh there's there was Getty Lee Steve Harris and Geezer Butler. I, I call them my top three. There were other bass players that I love, Paul McCartney, all the great stuff, all the greats. But those one I specifically focused on, um, I thought they were doing something that I they were they were right in front. Uh, they they put melody into their bass lines. You, you know what I mean? They they always added to the songs. That then that's what I heard first. They made the song elevate. 
Uh, they didn't take over the song. I don't think they took over the song, but they put enough in where it elevated the song to make this one beautiful piece of music. I thought that was so, and it helped the vocals at the same time, which I thought was, re and I still think is really important. A bass player can help the vocals by backing either a melody or just staying straight across. Uh, in songwriting, I think that's so important not to take over. Uh, I, I really think that's really important to, to know when to pull back. And that's a learning lesson for all the younger bass players out there. I mean, I'm 55 now, so I've learned, and I'm still learning, believe me. I'm definitely still the student of this, of when to pull back, when to push in a little bit more uh, without being too uh, egocentric and say, all right, I need, I need my part in there. It can't be about that. It's got to be, at the end of the day, what you learn is it's got to be about the song. It's all about the song, and, uh, and and that's the way it should be because it's all about the song. And if, if, if there's nothing better than hearing that bass taste, that tasty little bass part that you made up, really was uh, helped the song out, and it really made that that part stand out. There's nothing better than that for me. That's the high. Mm. I also noticed those three particular bass players are all of the metal genre. So was metal your thing from the get go? It was. Rock and roll and metal, yeah. I mean, those were my heroes. you got to remember, I, I grew up on Kiss, the band Kiss, and Gene Simmons, who's another amazing bass player, big influence also. Um, just, I, I I saw them as these gods, like these these people. Well, maybe maybe in my book, maybe in my, my, my mind, there was a father figure. They were doing something that, that was bigger than life, and I wanted to emulate. I thought that was very important. Uh, and they would, they were doing it the right way, where... Um, you knew it was right. You knew it was right. I love what they did on bass. They made pe they made me feel good, right? So I was looking back then. I was looking for anything that made me feel good. So that was my comfort zone. Uh, I thought that was very important. So, see, for, with me with bass, it's very emotional. It, it took over, and I found this out later on. That's why I'm I'm so passionate about this. I like I want to even the younger bass players that or whatever the, the novices. I I want to make everybody pick up a bass. Because I think it's an outlet. It's an outlet for your life. And when the world is hard, and the world is hard. We all know that, especially now. The outlet of having an instrument to pick up and taking all that pain away for a couple of minutes of the day. Whatever it is. I don't care. It takes that. It takes the pressure off. You're in another world, over this beautiful world of music. And you're able to put on a song. And maybe your favorite band, you can just jam along with your song, the song. And man... That takes you away. I think that's a very important outlet for people. Kids, stressed out, all that stuff. If you could just hand them that outlet to have, I think it's so important for uh, for them to have another day to move on to the next day. Uh, I think music would help a lot of people in this world. So I think it's I'm a proponent of that. I think it's very important to um, to pass the music on. Yeah, it's funny that you mentioned that because I was looking up your little kids rock thing where you go and you help kids in schools in, in New York and tell us about that. I've done a couple of them and I, a few of them uh, and I've, I've liked, look, I grew up in the Bronx, New York. They, they, you know, there wasn't a lot of, of music and stuff and uh, I actually had a music class before they stopped everything um, and which and, and was wonderful. I, I played trombone. I played baritone. Uh, the, you know, that the, the baritone thing. It was awesome. Uh, I can't remember any of it now, but that was still kind of bass. It was bass oriented, you know, so I was always feeling that. I, I, and for me, I was that kid. I was that kid. And you know what? I want to do more work now that the, uh, hopefully we can move on from this COVID thing. I want to work more with Little Kids Rock and stuff like that. I'm going to be looking into it again because it's very important to me to pass the torch at this point and making and, and just making people have that 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 brightness in their life. I think. There's nothing like seeing a student, a young boy or girl, or or whatever age you are, pick up a guitar and have that face on when that first acknowledgement that I did it. I, there's nothing better than that because we all had that, right? Mm -hmm. That you you can achieve something like how great is that? And that's the outlet I was just talking about. I think it's so important these days. These days to you know that's the pressure valve, man. Get that pressure valve off of these people and let them have a, a fun part of their life. So yeah, I, I've done it, and um, I've I've done a few of those things, and it's been great. Uh, I want to do more. I think it's important to do it. I think it's I think it's important to pass the torch at this point, and uh, I look forward to that stuff. So any, I do a lot of base clinics, as you you probably know. Uh, I just I I think it's it's wonderful when a person who's even trying trying just trying to pick up a guitar or bass that wants to learn 
And it's just about getting to that next step, getting over that hump here. Well, at my base clinics, I'll say, come on up here, put my base on them. And for me, I lived, kind of lived through them and I put my base on them. And the fa- just the face of putting my base on them because, you know, they like what I do. So putting my base on them and seeing their face, you know, I, fucking, that is the best high you can get because you're making a mark, man. You're making an imprint there and they're going to take this and want to go on. And you know how many people write me after that, after the base clinics that have done that? Thank you for doing this. Uh, you made me want to play. That is everything. So for me, uh, maybe, I'm a, maybe I'm in a reflective time in my life. I don't know what it is, but it makes me feel really good. And I want to do more of that. Oh, well, I'm looking forward to seeing more of that than when it happens. But like, speaking of reflection, I want to talk about this book that you have out with Joel. So Fathers, Brothers oh. and Sons, Surviving Anguish, Abandonment and Anthrax, um, oh. which you wrote with um, my my boss over at Bass Player Magazine, Joel MacGyver. Tell us about the book. Well, Joe's a longtime friend of me, a friend of mine for years and years. And we've been talking about doing this for years. There's just, there hasn't been, there hasn't been time. I've been on the road, as you probably know, for most of my life. And Joe's busy in his own right. He's got a million things going on. Uh during this COVID time, it was the time to do it. And Joel approached me on and said, this might be the time. And I said, I think you're right. Because we literally wrote the book where I am. I'm sitting right here. And this is what we did. We just talked every day. And I'm, I'll tell you, Alan, a lot of it, like when I went through the personal stuff, it digs up this stuff that you didn't kind of want to dig up. But Joel's very good at that and really pulling it out of you. And uh, it hurt because there was some painful stories from my in my history but there's also some great rock and roll stories that it's wonderful because Joe will just kind of light the fire. He'll just ignite me. And then I'll be blabbing forever. And we, all of a sudden, we have this these crazy stories that I even forgot. But I, I guess he could ignite it. And it came back. And oh my, I said, wow, that was so much fun. There's, there's a lot of great rock and roll stories in it um, that from some of the bigger names, Metallica, you know, there's, there's some great rock and roll stories that we've had. Kiss, just fun stories that I've had in my history that a lot of people don't know because I've never, I've never told these stories uh, through, throughout all these years. For me being a Kiss fan, I'll tell you real quick, for me being a Kiss fan, growing up in New York, I live in New York. So what we used to do, uh, being diehard Kiss fans, this is, remember, 14, 15 years old. We knew their management was down in a certain area in Manhattan. We knew they were going to have meetings. We had inside info. My friend, my friend Tom had inside information. When they were going to have a, a, a group meeting downtown at their management. So what we would do, my, me and my friends, a couple of them, especially my friend Tom, we would go downtown, wait in front of the management and wait for Kiss to come so we could meet them. And it, 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 this was a weekly thing. So at, after a while... <laughs> we they knew us after a while. The Kiss guys knew us. Oh, you, well, how do you know? How do you always know when we're here? I remember Gene Simmons. How do you know we're always here? There's, there's something you know. Something I don't know how you know we're getting here, but we're here and you're here all the time. I'm gonna find out. And it's great over the history. Over the history, these guys have gotten to know us. And now, as I'm in the band Anthrax, Gene remembers all these great times. And Gene Gene Simmons wrote the forward to my book, which is a, a privilege and an honor. Um, to, to even fathom that in my mind that Gene wrote my an, an amazing forward to my book, uh, I'm so proud of it. Um, it's it's a notch for me. It, it it's just heartfelt, um, and it, it it really came around. I'm, I'm I'm very very grateful. So, what is the writing process like then? How I mean, how did you do it? Like the writing process is literally as we are talking right now. And then Joe tried. would pick my brain. Joe would pick my brain and would, like this, and it would be nonstop, just um, going back and forth. Then we would we review. He write it up and we review, it, and then we just edit it, mm. edit it. What's what doesn't work? What, and that's the pro. That's the that's the process. That's a little bit problematic. It's it's a little bit it's a little bit tedious, but you want to get it right. Um, but as I've never done this before, but Joe made it made it easy for me as easy as possible it, it, get, it gets a little tedious but you want to get the stories right you want to get the people right and you know and you want to make it entertaining and it is for you know i've read the i've read this book a, a lot there's a lot a lot of times already and i i have to say i'm, I'm a nitpicker 
I've nitpicked everything out that I think that didn't belong. And I, I just found it entertaining. It's hard to talk about yourself, but I kind of look at it as a fan. And I think there's, there's so much that people didn't know about me and my life and the crazy things that happened. Uh, and, and just and the whole anthrax. There's a lot of great anthrax stories that people don't know. Um, there's a lot of fun stuff. And aside from the, the pain uh, that I've had with my family, I've had some pe family tragedies that, that have gone on that uh, people will read and find out about. Uh, uh, my brother, unfortunately, at 23, he was murdered. Uh, so we went through the, the whole court system. It was very traumatic and, and very horrible for my family. Uh, so we, in the Bronx, New York, so we had to go through the courts of the Bronx, New York. And if, if you've never done that, I pray you never have to put it that way. Very painful stuff. And they've kind of dragged us through the mud. And, uh, and I guess at the end of the day, what I try to convey to people here, uh, at the end of the day, you brush yourself off and you, cut, you kind of try to rise to the top. So it's like uh, kind of like that. It's like that kind of vibe. Look, as much pain and, and sorrow you go through, what you have to do is take that next step and brush yourself off. And if I can do it, you can certainly do it. That's in whatever whatever you've gone through. Mm, exactly. So 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 people who have had a hard time can find some strength in your book as well. You know, but the people who've read my book already with in my little circle here have all said that it's it's it, you can do this kind of book because if, Frank, if you if you did it, anybody can do it and and relate to it. They relate to it. And you can put it into any any kind of painful thing in your past. And what you have to do is take that next step and get out of it. And, and as, as hard as it seems, look, if I can do it, then you can do it. And that's, uh, I don't want to say it's a self-help book, but it's kind of like a self-help book and in, in the kind of music thing, you know, music vibe. So um, I've been very lucky to be a musician, very, uh, very, I mean, I've been very, um, very successful musician. <laughs> well, I, I don't even want to, I'm, I'm very lucky to be successful, but uh, I've been very, um, I just been a, a, it's been a fun ride, but um, it's also I've been very fortunate. How about that? That's that's mm. the word because I've been very fortunate and I'm humbled by it. What happens with the book? You you read up on your life. You're talking about your life and you realize what a great ride it's been and how thankful I am for it. I've been very fortunate, and that's that's the right word. But it took me a, an hour to get it, get that word. But yeah, mm. it, um, I've been very fortunate. And I, I, look, I just want to pass this pass this through now to other people and make them feel good about themselves. That's what it's about. Yeah, that's brilliant. I'm going to check that out. I'm going to, well, I'm going to get a signed coffee off Joel, hopefully, when I get back to London. <laughs> I think we can arrange that. Oh, awesome. <laughs> awesome. Where are you now, Ellen? Well, I'm back in Ireland uh, at the moment. Going, going back to London next week. Um, How's everything there? Um, it, we're not allowed any live music in Ireland at all, but it's all opened up in, in London, so all my work, because I'm a session player and I work in Cool. theater shows and stuff it's all opened up next i have to go back to work in a, a theater run so you know but i've been enjoying the countryside you know i mean there's there's good things bad things out of the whole lot you know yeah you know it's crazy here alan you know, i've lived in new york as you know and um my first show back i went on sunday i went to see the foo fighters at msg madison square garden uh great 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 i have to say great a few times because it was great the show was great. The band was great. The crowd was great. Uh, I think a lot of people took a sigh of relief and breath, and and it felt like there's a there's a change now. There's 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 a moving on of stuff. And I have to say there was a vibe in that place. Uh, it's just because I was just happy to be a show at a show. I just wanted to relive what I love. Right. I want to. I want to. I want to get back into this. And I thought the Foo Fighters, to their credit, did a great job of doing that. You know, um, I just enjoyed being at a show uh, and, and just I had, I had a drink in my hand, had a good buzz going. You know, I was I was just a genuine fan on Sunday. And I look forward to people doing that again all around the world, uh, Ireland, everywhere. Uh, it's just the next step. You know, I think that I think it's right in front of us. And I hope it all happens sooner than later for all of us. But just don't give up hope. That's what, that, I guess that's that's what I'm trying to say, because it's, it's a tough situation. But I think, you know, we're going to get through it. Yeah, it's a, a particularly tough situation for us uh, performers. You know, I mean, a lot of people are all like, oh, we could do all this stuff on the Internet. And, and all that. Cause I'm a comedian as well. And I'm like, I'm no interest in doing that. I, I want to be with an audience. You know what I mean? Or playing on a gig. You know what I mean? So... How did you, yeah. how did you survive it? Like, 
You know, it's weird, Alan. I'm telling you the truth. It's really weird. I'm in this basement, right? I've done those videos. You probably have done those videos where you jam with other musicians and stuff and they put it, they edit it all together and it's like, it looks like a song. But you, meanwhile, you're still in your, I'm in my basement jamming alone. There's no crowd here or anything like that. I'm jamming to a song that's pre-recorded <clears throat> and all that stuff. There's no feedback. Like we, we love from the audience, you know, that initial, that, that energy. Look, the reason why we play is because we love the energy from the audience, right? We, we, we want that thing. We want that, that feedback. I, I don't think for me, the only reason why I love doing this is because I want to build an energy together with the audience. We're not playing at the audience. We're playing with the audience. So we all build one thing that gets us all feeling everybody, band and audience. It makes us get to this high and that's the high we all look for. And how long, I mean, Anthrax, we've been together forever. This is the longest we've ever been without a show. It's the longest in all our career, 40 years, We've never gone this long without a show and for that taste. So I think um, next month is our first show back in Wisconsin. We're playing at some festival. And man, let me tell you, uh, not only do I have to get in my ass in shape, you know, physically, you know, but uh, just playing wise, you know this, Alan, when you play a gig, it's a different energy than playing at your house mm-hmm. or in the studio. The, the adrenaline, everything else, it, it has to be matched. So I'm, I'm actually working on that at home but you know it won't be good because it won't be good enough because it's nothing like having one or two shows under your belt right yeah totally it's just honest it's just honest you'll you'll do 110 you'll give 110 on that stage that night but you'll want to be better and you know you will be you, you'll give it all and uh that's the idea but uh it always takes you a couple of shows to get back that you know that that vibe you know mm. and there's nothing like a tour to just get your chops up <laughs> Yeah, because, you know, even if you screw up, whatever it is, even if you're not feeling it, you have that next night or the night after that to come back and correct it. Just like you're a stand-up comedian. You get it. Comedians, they, I, love, I have total respect. I'm, a friend, I'm friends with a lot of great comedians. They say, one bad night, one bad show, you have that next night. It really is important just to correct that and get that vibe in your head that everything's okay, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's really similar. Well, you guys are celebrating your 40th anniversary now. It's weird. <laughs> I get, when you say that, as those words, as that number comes out of your mouth. I'm I almost, it, almost as old as the band. <laughs> wow. wow. And imagine that. So <clears throat> I still don't understand how it went this fast, to be honest with you. Um, and I'm look, I'm very, I'm humbled. I'm thankful that we've had this career. I, I'm saying all the right things, and that's the truth. That's how I feel. But if you ask me, I, I don't feel like it's been 40 years. It's a, I, I mean, obviously, I got in the band later. Than, uh, I, I think it's 38 years for me because the band started before me. But mm-hmm. I still don't feel like that because we've been on the road all our lives. And I just, I remember the first album. I remember touring in the vans. I remember all everybody, the band and crew, sleeping in one room with one shower. That whole thing, everybody taking turns in the shower and all that, and the, the smell of the room, all that great stuff that we love from the tours, right? And the, and and the horrible smells that come out of a van with band and crew in it, all that great stuff that we you grow up on and, and really, you know, um, make you who you are. I miss all that, but I can't believe that was when you say that number, right? It just that that was yesterday. So cut to today. I feel like my band is hungrier. The guys in my band are hungrier now, specifically because we have another record that's going to come out next year. But after all this COVID stuff being held down like this, the anticipation, um, the, the, the angst, we all have angst. That's why I think after all this stuff is cleared, I think it's going to be a great thing for the music industry because people want to fucking see shows. Excuse my language. I don't know if I'm allowed to curse. You're allowed to curse. <clears throat> I'm Irish. It's okay. expected. Okay. Thank you. That and I'll close um, <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, I, I think this is is great future ahead for all of us musicians because we've waited our time. And, yeah, we have this pent-up thing going on. We need to get it out. We And I, I can't wait to see all musicians get out there and all, all music fans. I think it's going to be a great celebration. Um, I'm psyched because, you know, we're starting to see light. We're starting to see light at the end of the tunnel here for everybody in the world. You know, I hope. Mm, absolutely. I, hope it's all behind. I was actually and, talking uh, about this to a 
Oh, sorry. I was, mm-hmm. I was actually talking about this with a friend of mine and she was saying, you know what, like, it's been a year and a half, a half of, like, you know, normal, the normal people working from home, saving all their money, not being able to spend it. That as soon as we all get the green light, we're all going to be up to our nads in gigs and comedy shows and theatre and everything. It's the only way, right? It's the natural progression now. We Yeah, we've paid our dues. And the way I look at it, yeah, we've paid our dues. This is horrible. It's a horrible situation. A lot of people, unfortunately, have died. I've had my, my two neighbors, a neighbor Joe next to me, 49 years old, just had another kid, got COVID, passed away. He, healthy dude. I mean, healthy dude. I'm not, I don't want to bum anybody out, but I'm just saying this is very real to me because it hit home. Four of my family members had it pretty bad. My neighbor across the street, uh, Tony, uh, love, lovely dude, construction dude, burly dude, right? 59 years old. He went into a coma from COVID in January. He came home two weeks ago. He made it. it was a, it's a miracle. He made it. He was on the tubes and everything. He made it. He came home two weeks ago out of a coma. Lost 40 pounds. He's coming back to health now. But to me, this was all very, very real. It was right in front of me. Uh, it's, it's, it's just a very scary thing. So I, you know, <laughs> I'm very cautious with all of it. I mean, that's why I've been in my basement for a year and a half. <laughs> True. It's the truth. I've been, I, I have a family, you know, it's, it's, I'm, I'm, I just want to be cautious and I just hope everybody stays healthy. That's all. I, I want, I want, I want everybody to rock another day. It's important. Absolutely. Absolutely. So as well as uh, writing the book this year, what else have you been doing up to in that basement of yours? You know, it's great because I guess I have no choice, to, no choice to it, but um, I've written some songs for the book and Joel knows this. We don't know when we're going to release it around the book, but um, I did I did a project a few years ago um, called Altitudes and Attitude with my friend Dave Ellison, mm-hmm. and uh, it did it did pretty well because it was just rock and roll songs that I I, I had and Dave worked with me on them. Uh, so I've written some solo material that are along the lines of Altitudes and Attitude. So for all of those people who are asking for more Altitudes and Attitude, please give this a shot because I think you you might like it because it's really a continuation of that for me. So. Uh, that's what I've been doing, and actually, I'm doing another mix of it tonight. Uh, so, if you're asking what I've been doing, I've been writing with Anthrax, um, writing my own songs, trying to get um, ready for the next progression here, I guess, uh, uh, because I think we're, we're going to start playing live again. I think there's a number of festival shows that I have. Uh, and I, 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 do you get like this, even if you have a gig? Have you have you booked any gigs yet, Alan? I've, yeah, I've got a few. I've got a, a run of a theatre show as well coming up for a couple Good. of weeks. So. That's so. How are you feeling? I'm, I'm interviewing you now. I have to do this for a second. <laughs> how are you? How are you preparing physically first? And because there is a physicality to it, right? Mm. There is that, and there's also 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 a mental thing there, right? How do you do it? I'll, I, well, let's compare notes here. So, how are you doing it? And I'll tell you how I do it. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I should be doing more. I think, um, because normally I was, I, I, yeah, because I was in such a good routine of like, learn, get the songs, learn the songs, go play with an artist, or go do a theater, or whatever I'm doing, or sit down, write me jokes, go do a show, a set. But now it's like nothing, and I'm like, but also <laughs> last weekend I went camping with my friends and I fell over a tree stump and I hurt my hand, so I'm trying not to play bass this uh. week, and I've got a whole musical theater thing to learn and I'm like oh god does better get better is it like sprain what'd you do oh it's like a sprain it's just um I just ah. fell over a stump in a camping okay. <laughs> no, more, no more camping for you for a while that's it that's it but yeah. it's hard I mean because it's been a whole year and a half that makes no sense yeah. grammatically either but a year and a half of <laughs> not because I'm not a lot of, a lot of my friends are like oh great I'm gonna do all these lessons and I'm gonna really go into shed and I'm going to practice all this stuff I, I'm not that way I'm like I, I only want to practice or play when I've got something to practice and play for like so I just find it, now I'm trying to get out of this whole oh I'm just going to go walk in the woods now and you know go for a dip in the sea and all this and get back into like well, I have to play some bass and learn some stuff <laughs> you know it, it is that and you know I agree with that because that's how I get there are times where look you get you get home when I get home from tour, I don't even touch a bass. I know this sounds horrible, but I just need to decompress yeah, I, when, from a long tour. If I'm on a six or seven week tour, no offense to bass players or any or any musicians out there, 
the last, I just want to see my family. I want to, I want to crack a beer. I want to sit on my couch and veg, you know, and just let it all flow, man. Let it flow. And then let the hunger, because you need that hunger. I don't want to play bass because I have to play. I want to play bass because I love playing bass. And when that itch comes back, a couple of days, usually maybe three or four days, I'll start to get itchy. I'm playing again within four or five days again, like heavily, maybe the week. And then I'm playing, you know, and then, I'll, then I'm hungry again. Uh, I think that's really important. That the, I don't need to push it. I don't want to push it for me. I, I, because if I, if I need to push it, that's not, it's not organic. You know what I mean? For me. Oh, yeah, you learn your, your scales and all that stuff. But um, I think I, I want to have that fire. And it, it makes me more, it, it just makes me more fluent and, and just makes it flow you know, better for me. And if I give my, if I, I, I kind of give myself a break, it's like, all right, you just came off a seven week tour. You've been playing bass every fucking day. you 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 know, everything hurts, you know, as you get older and Ellen, you see this, look, you come home, you just want to rest your muscles. And that's the truth. So, um, I, I look forward to just vegging out, but now I'm on the opposite side. I can't wait to get into that mode of, of nonstop every day playing and killing, you know, just killing it, man, just going for it. Um, so I think that's going to be a welcome where you sweat and you feel good about sweat and all that good stuff. You know, uh, that's what I call it tour shape when you get in that tour shape. So yeah. when, when that comes, uh, because we haven't felt it in so long, I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm the same. I'm the same. If I, like, if I do a long run or if I do a tour as well, I'm just, I don't want to do it after. I want to just, you want to find something else to do for a bit and then yeah. you need, yeah. Well, yeah. Speaking of having other things to do, you're also an actor as well. I mean, I, I remember seeing you in um, that Tim Buckley movie, uh, Greetings from Tim yeah. Buckley. Yeah. I played Richard Hell in that. that um, it, was a, it was a while ago. It was years ago now because, look, I've been on tour. And, and this is the whole thing. I think when people say Frank acts, I'm not interested in fame. Obviously, I, I don't give a shit about fame. It doesn't make sense. I think, and again, going through this book now, again, why I got so into the theater. I live in New York, so I, I've seen a lot of theater in my life. It's about performance and stuff. And, and I equate acting to like writing a song. You put your, you know, you put your, your life into the, the character and all that stuff. This is what I've learned because I've studied a lot of theater in, in, in New York classes. Um, it's really like writing a, like the verse, the chorus, you know, the bridge of a song, you put the character, you put life into the character the same kind of way. So I, I equate them like that. And why I think I got into it so deeply and just to know the how to do it and it made me know more about myself, maybe find out about, I wanted to learn me. They're like, it, it rips you down. The teachers I've had were great teachers in New York City and um, they it really stripped you down to the core of who you are. And I, I guess I was, on, I was on a quest to find out who I was really in this life. Uh, I think that really showed me, uh, and they strip you down everything, a, a, all your emotions are stripped. So I really found out and uh, it helped me. It helped me. I think it was therapeutic for me. It was my therapy all through my life, I guess, from being the traumatic, going through the traumatic stuff, my dad taking off and abandoning us. At, I was 10 years old. So I really wanted to find out who I was after that because I had nobody to show me. So I think that was the way to get in it. And it really showed me a lot about myself and and what I wanted to be and the person I wanted to be. And it helped me in my music career because I also found out where I was coming from as a songwriter. I thought that was important. And um, it made me strive to be better that way. And I still love it. And to this day, I still audition. And if there's ever time to do stuff and if I get booked on something, it's great. But when you're a touring musician, Anthrax comes first. That's the bottom line. It's always been that way with me. So there have been things where you can read for it and you get the second call back or whatever it is. And even if you get the booking, uh, well, I'm not available because Anthrax is starting this tour, you know, and that, and that happens and it's, it's part of life. But again, that's not always. And sometimes I, I just didn't do well enough or maybe they just didn't like the way I looked or other, other things. That, and um, I just enjoy doing it. But for the most part, I've been on the road most of my life and uh, this, they need to they need to know what you're doing for the next couple of months. You can't just be on the road. And maybe you know, and and not be there for them if you if they book you. So, but I, I find I find the whole thing like as soon as theater opens here in New York again, I'm I'm going down downtown because that's where live theater. There's not for me still to this point. I know people find it a lot of people find it boring. I find it that's the ultimate edge. You're living on the edge of each word. I just find it fascinating. Live music and I, I equate those two. 
theater and music. And you, you're a stand-up comedian, so you kind of get that, mm-hmm. how you live on the edge, on the stage with the audience. I, I love that. I think there's, there's such fucking, it's just great. There's great power in that. Yeah. There's great power on both sides, from the audience to to whoever's on stage. I think this it's awesome. That's it. I play in a musical theater show as well, where like we're we're on the stage with the um, ca- cast, and I'm there watching yeah. the cast. And you know, if I'm not, because the bass lines are all over the place, because it's all awesome. You know, musical theater is all right. It's right. Mad time signatures, mad key signatures, and mad changes, and you're just all on the edge. But there's the odd song where it's just piano and vocals or something, and I just get to sit there and watch, and I'm totally sucked in. You know, it's it's amazing, like yeah. brilliant. You know, you know, if you hear the show called, and we're talking theater now. Yeah, uh, Rent. You've heard Rent, right? The, the yeah. musical. Um, well, the, the original lead, Adam Pascal, his name is Adam Pascal. He's an amazing singer, amazing actor, and all that. He's, he's a musician. He's also a bass player, Adam Pascal. We're actually having drinks with him this week in the city. So um, when, when I first met Adam, he was doing Rent. Uh, and I watched him, and I became a fan of his before I knew him. And I just watched him. So now, as I've become friends with him, I've asked him all these questions about that feeling. Because how are you coming from the bass player's world and stuff like that? He's, he's, he's an amazing singer, but he's also a rock guy, too. He's, he's a rock guy. So he has both of those things that I was just talking about. You know, that whole rock thing and, and, and just watching. He li- he's living on the edge when he's when he's singing. I just, I find it fascinating. I do. Yeah. There is something weird going on there, isn't there? Like between, you see an awful lot of crossing of all these different arts. You know, um, actors becoming musicians or musicians becoming actors or or comedians becoming actors and all this it's kind of like there must be yeah. something related and, and there is something there because i it's all for me i think it's all about like i was talking about getting into it and um the, the equating songwriting into the parts of the, of the character and all that stuff but for me it, and it's also that spontaneous vibe you get going on that live stage and like well, every time i go onto an anthrax stage before we go on Get the bass check out. Everything's working right. You, you're getting for that next. My first step, I have to say to myself, and this is, I've done this since I started because I have to, I, say, I always want to make it better than the last time. And I, and I my first step onto the stage, I, as I'm stepping, I say to, 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 to myself, watch this. I want to impress myself because I have to give 110. I got to leave it. I got to feel exhausted. I know that sounds campy and all that stuff, but I, I really... I want to feel exhausted when I leave the stage because I was that fan. I am that fan <clears throat> who who thinks I want to see everything. I paid my money. I want to see you give everything and you and you deserve that. And that's to this day, I think you have to put that out there. So when I take a step on the stage, I'm going to be, bro- I, I want to be broken down. I want to feel like the high and exhausted. I want to feel high. That's the whole thing. I want to feel the high there, right there and just feel exhausted when I come off the stage because then I think I've done it. I've done my job <clears throat> for that night. And hopefully people will get their money's worth, I think, and have a great time and leave with a good feeling. You know, that's the idea. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. It's definitely, I, I, I remember seeing a different interview before uh, when you were talking about the acting and it was like, um, it's, it's a go from a musician to an actor. It's an extension of performance. It is. It's all about performance. It's, it's that high. It's it, again, it's, the acclamation, you're getting from, you know, it's, it's that vibe. You hit a funny line in a the theater, <clears throat> you have a, you have a funny line and you hear that crowd, you know, it's like, all right. And you, and you, you absorb it. You absorb it. You play a song on the stage as a, as a musician, the crowd is going crazy. You absorb it. It's like, we all need this. I got you, you need it. I need it. Fans need it too. It's the same thing. It, it, I think we all, cause I'm a fan. I need that. I need to hear that. You know, I need the, the acknowledgement of it all. I think it's very important to even I was watching the Foo Fighters. I was you know, I was loving it, man. The other night it was just it felt good to be back at a show. But I'm a fan, man. And I just it doesn't matter who's there or who's not there. I'm going to enjoy this part. And I, I just want to let it know. Yeah, I want to do. Yeah, because that's my high. Right, it's my time to be like that. Even if I'm sitting in the seat or or standing and, and just waving it on, yeah, that's that's the acknowledgement that we it made us feel good. It's it makes us feel good. How about that? Yeah. That's the line. It makes us feel good on both sides of it, audience and musician. I think it it makes us feel good. It's great to see um, 
a musician such a so successful as yourself and you know with this huge career behind you like to to still have that you know that fan vibe to still to still to not be all jaded by the industry or any of that crack you know what i mean Believe me, I'm, I'm, I hate the business of music. I love music, but the business side of it is horrible. I mean, is there a music business anymore, right? I mean, business-wise, with, with all the craziness. I love the fact that we've kept it. fans, the fans and the musicians have kept this thing going, even though kind of like the, the whole business side of it went crazy, right? It went, it went crazy. So we were still keeping it alive, and I love that. I, I love that, and it's something to be celebrated. And... Uh, for me, I, I just want to do more. I want to build this thing up. I want to, music has done a lot for my life. Not only, yeah, it, it supports my family and all that great stuff, but deeper than that, deeper than that, music has really, I think, because of the abandonment issues I have and all that stuff, it filled, it fills a void. It mm -hmm. fills a void that I didn't have. And I was searching when I was 10 years old, whatever, whatever you want to call it, father figure, whatever that is, it filled that hole. And it, it made it better. It was like a Band-Aid that, all right, you can you can take the next step, Frank, in your life, whatever that is. So you'll see that in the book. And for me, it means everything. So I want to pay back now. My, my thing is now, it's been so good to me. I want other people who are maybe having a bad time in their life, I want them to feel that feeling of goodness. This is something, this is something that music does to you that, can, you know, it can heal you. It can, it can make you feel better. And it's it's really important that people know that. Yeah, that's that's great. I totally agree with that. Totally, yeah. it's it's like you know, it's, just honest. it's your it's your friend to turn to when no one else understands, kind of thing. It'll always be there. It'll always be there. There's nothing. There's nothing better if you're having a shit day, right? Mm -hmm. you, you put your headphones on. You don't have to play. Even if you don't play, I what I do if I have a shit day. I'll go. I'll go jam a Rush song or something. You know what I mean? I'll go. You know, and I'll. I'll just get it and that'll get me to the other place, right? It'll get me for a few minutes. It'll get that angst out of me. Fuck, I'm pissed off at something, blah, 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 at a shit day. You know, whatever, I'll pick it up or I'll just put the headphones on and whatever the hell it is. I mean, if, if I told you some of the music I listened to to this day that got me through a lot when I was young, you would laugh. But it was still music. To me, it meant a lot. I think everybody has that. Everybody has music that's personal to them. And, you know, I say some of that in the book too, but... Uh, I, I just, I'm very grateful to music and I, you know, I'm 55 now. I have no intention of slowing down with music. It is, if anything, why, why would you slow down? People say, well, you're getting older. I can give a shit. I'm, I'm hungrier now than ever. Why, what, what are we going to do? Stop and die? <laughs> no, there's no dying around. I want, I want to enjoy this ride. I want to, I'm going to feel, I'm going to finish it until I can't finish it you know, until it's done. And that. That's just the way I look at it, man. It's just a, it's a great ride to be on and stay on, stay on it, man. It's just a, I don't care how old you get, you can play. I want to be playing when I'm well into my, uh, my senior years to help with that. I never want to, who wants to stop playing? If we're fortunate enough to learn an instrument and, you know, there's no reason to stop playing ever. I, I, I want to, I want to try that. I want to write that new song that people, that makes people feel better and, and, or whatever gets, gets that angst out of people. I want to do that. I, I'm always searching for that. And that's what it is. It's a quest. This damn thing's a quest. And and uh, I, I look forward to the next step in that. I think it's important to keep, keep that hunger, man. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you don't look 55 whatsoever. Like, oh, Thanks. Yeah, you know what it is? I feel it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it is? I'm a, I'm a yoga guy. And when you're home and you can't be, my, my, my yoga teacher is like, a, and I sound like a, you know, Frank's at the yoga. No, it keeps me limber because you can't, as you get older, the muscles just don't work, work the way you want them to. I learned through yoga, it elongates your muscles. It helps my back out, which all the stages I've been through all of, over these years have destroyed my back. So I have a great yoga teacher, a teacher that really takes me apart and gets to those part, parts and stretches me out and knows, knows the moves to make me go. So uh, I haven't been able to go because of this, because this, the class has been shut down. But uh, I've, I've heard that they're recently opening again, which is kind of awesome. So I'm looking forward to that's the next getting shape, get my fat ass into shape, you know, and, uh, and it's time to move on. Right. Yeah. Joel's a big yoga fan as well. He, he was messaging me saying, you got to get into yoga. It's great. And I, I have done. It's brilliant. It, you know what it is? It's you have to stay with it. It's, it's also good because I, I have a screw loose in my brain, obviously. And it keeps my brain kind of straight and, uh, you know, 
the whole yoga thing and it makes me relax and I'm a high end individual. I don't know if you could tell that or not. I'm a high end individual, so it actually takes it down a notch, which which is something I need in life. What do you mean? You know? What do you mean by high end? High energy. High energy, high end. Um, uh, there's a lot of verb going on here, you know. <laughs> and you would think that you. I, I think I've calmed down a little bit as I've gotten older, but and, and I think things out more, which is good. But uh, as my wife has said before. Um, you need to take it down a notch. And then the yoga thing, she notices when I haven't been to yoga class in a while because I'm right back. And uh, <laughs> I guess it's cool because I use that for the stage. And that's what's great about the stage. I can get it all out. I can get it all out on the stage. So it, it really helps me get everything out there and, and make and make it better afterwards. So it's uh, that's why I'm looking forward to, even to one show next, next month. It's, I think we have eight or nine shows this year, like all festivals and stuff. <laughs> And then the proper touring, hopefully, hopefully, uh, depending on the world, um, will we'll, we'll start for, for us next year and with the record and all that good stuff. Yeah. It, oh, no. It, that will, it'll all come back and people will be crazier for it than ever before. Like, I mean, I know for if I'm not playing a festival, I'll be at them, <laughs> you know? Right. That's, that's my point. It's like, uh, look, I think everybody wants this, right? Mm. Everybody wants it. And whatever you believe, you believe. But what I believe is that we all need music. That's why I, you know, I don't care about anything else. I just, I just know I want to play and I, I want to see shows and I'll go out to shows. I think it's going to be for for people going out. I think it's going to be bigger than ever to go out to a show. And and so it's so. And if anything, I think we've all learned how important live music is, which is all, which is great for all of us, fans and musicians. How important that feeling of of seeing a live show, like the other day when I was there at the Foo Fighters, I, it just made me feel of oh, man. This is what it's all about. It's just yelling for this song or whatever, making you feel that, oh, yeah, get whatever the hell came out, came out of me. Mm -hmm. And it just felt so good. I had a couple of vodkas. I was feeling, you know, I was doing the whole game. <laughs> I was in Madison Square Garden. I don't know. Did I tell Joel yeah. this? I live in New York, so it's it's a little more expensive here, as you, as you can tell. I had two, a double of vodka, right? Just a double of vodka. And I, so it's, I, and this is just something out of the blue. And I, I forgot the prices. So the guy, the bartender, was forty dollars, forty American dollars for two, a double vodka, and that was at the show. But that was the best forty dollars because I just drank and it felt great. And you know, I had a couple of them, so it was, it was, it was a, uh, it was a good night. So I had, uh, I'm a lightweight in drinking, but um, <laughs> it was uh, that kind of night. But I forgot that you know because I haven't been to the a, a garden show obviously in, in a long time. Mm -hmm. So wow, forty bucks, all right, okay. I just didn't understand it, but uh, you could buy a bottle. <laughs> you could buy a bottle. 40 bucks that's so like but that's um that's uh frank being frank it is what it is <laughs> so um you know do you, are you missing uh doing the base clinics and going to shows like nam and stuff like that i'm missing everything i'm missing you know you know what's great about clinics uh when when you can i love the fact when um a lot of people come to my clinics like that that are either afraid to take that step and dip their water into uh, dip their toe into the water uh, of of trying it, of picking it up, of of just they they, and I was that kid. I was that kid too because I was like this from when I was younger, you know. And, and I've been to some base clinics before, where and I'm not comparing anything, but I try not to. But I don't want to be intimidated out of playing. You know, if you can understand that, like you see a lot of great bass players just doing a lot of scales and kind of going over people's heads. Uh, I'm a meat and potatoes kind of guy. Like I, I wasn't classically trained or anything like that. I learned, I'm an ear player. I learned how to play through my ear. Um, I, I, what I like doing is getting that person that's afraid to dip their toe in the water of, of bass and just come up here. And that's what we were talking about it before, about here, come up and try my bass. I just want you to play one note, just the E note. I put the bass on them with the strap. And of course it's longer down to the knees. I wear it pretty low. So um, I just say, look, Nothing else. Don't worry about it. You look good with the bass. All, all those, you, you know, because you, you want to pump up the energy. You want to pump up their, their confidence. Just try this. All I want you to do, I want you to put your finger, your forefinger, on that thick string, that thick E string. I think it's important. Just hold the neck like this. Just leave it open. You don't have to press anything. Pluck that string. So I want you to do. So the best part is when they do that, the acknowledgement when they do it and they hear that note coming from what they made is the beginning of the beauty of playing. It's all the beginning. And I love that. And you could take them on a journey after that because they get a little more confident. 
All right, now I want you to try an F. You go, you know, you know, let me describe this. So you just, just try like this. It'll be like, right? Can you see this? Yep. Just that one finger, just the one, and just, just do this. It's all I ask them to do. And just seeing that, and I give them a little more confidence. Now try this. Hold your finger here. It's really as simple as it. That's an F. Here we go, right? And you go up the scale, and then you see the confidence build. And isn't that everything? Isn't that where we all live, mm-hmm. right? I mean, you could do any scale you want. You can do whatever for players out there. Great. But it's still all about the beginning of that love and that finding finding that way. Wow, that's the, that's the entry gate right there. We're entering this world of music. So I love doing that. That's my favorite part about clinics, doing that. And then, and then just people coming up and want to learn anthrax riffs that I've done, bass riffs. There's nothing more complimentary than that for me. So when they, they like something I've done. I, I, I'm humbled by that. Thank you. Please come up here. I'm going to show you firsthand. I think that's really important. So it's, it's, it's just a, a fun way of doing it where we could all learn something. I'm learning something from you. I'm learning that you're, you're learning the new stuff and I'm learning how you're playing now. I'm learning how your technique is going to be. I think that's because everybody's got their own technique, right? Even if you try that one finger. I, I love that. I think it's very, for me, it's very entertaining just in, and just watching somebody open up their, their world. It really is. So I, I, I just think it's very important. Mm-hmm. So I know I can go on about it and I don't mean to, but I, I just, I just think it's, uh, it's, it's very cool when you could pass the torch, but something that's been so good to you and you can pass it over to somebody and maybe they're going to take it and make their life better and, you know, mm. onward and onward with other people. It's, it's important. Yeah, it's also scary the amount of power like a teacher can have, you know, when you're when you're learning an instrument because because it is such a confidence based thing. Like if if yeah. you're a start, if if someone doesn't encourage you or support you and say, okay, that's great, but try this, rather than say you're shit, give up. You know what I mean? It, it makes such Oof. a. I can business. never, I can never, and that's what I was talking about before. You know, you got to be really careful with with these clinics and stuff. There's there's a lot of great teachers out there that do clinics, but I've seen some clinics that I won't name any people, but they were just talking over my head. And this was, you know, before I played more, I was just intimidated. I was like, you know, wait, wait, I, I, that's too fast for me. I can't, I can never do that. You know, never say I should have. I, I never want to say I, 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 I can't. I, it's, that's not my vocabulary. I want to try, but take me through it. And that's, that's where I think I learned, slow it down, slow it down, baby steps. Because, and there's players that will understand it. Most people will understand how you're taking these new players into it. And making them part of the club. I want to make people part of this club. That's the whole idea. We've been very fortunate to be part of this club, and I, I think it's it's so cool when they they come to the next clinic and they're in their own groove, right? They're in. They said you taught me this, and so I just I started on my own. I started learning, and and they're, they're playing this great bass stuff. It's like right there. That's it. That's what it's about. And you just you just inspired somebody to have this outlet. Again, it goes back to the outlet of of bass and music in their life. Come on, man. And therefore, if they're having a shitty day, come on, you, you, you go play. And all of a sudden, it's not so shitty, is it? So I think it's, uh, I don't know. It, for me, it all makes sense. It, I'm not Mr. Goody Two Shoes, but in my life, it made a big deal to me. And um, I just believe in paying back, you know. But I want to know about your 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 gear. Like, what, what gear do you use? You've got yeah, signature ESPs and all that? Um, I have my ESP bases. Yeah, I have. And uh, my Harky amps. I love Harky. Uh, have you ever tried Harky? Yeah. Cool. I think they're an underrated company that is really, <laughs> really, uh, they, they're they with me all around the world. I, ha- I have to say, uh, they don't let me down. Uh, we, we, we tour uh, quite extensively. And uh, they're pretty, uh, look, I rarely have, unless somebody drops a drink in the damn thing. You know, somebody puts, you know, you're at a gig and somebody puts their beer oh, on top that. of your ramp. Not, it says, don't put in no drinks, all that stuff right there. Guy's hanging out, lighting a cigarette, puts his beer down, right? Guess what? Goes into Frankie's amp, <laughs> you're done. That rarely happens. We don't want that to happen. But um, yeah, it, they, they stay, they're consistent. It's, it's, for me, it's plug in and go. I have a little Sans amp, you know, my still old school Sans amp. For the, for the edge of it all uh, that I still use in the studio, I love that they're 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 actually my sound. Let's face it, you know you you what you hear in your head. You can, for me, I could use that, and it, it gets it exactly the way I want 
because the knobs, it's old school stuff, but it's not rack mounted or anything. It's a little pedal. Everybody knows a Sans amp. And um, I have the older ones. So um, I don't, look, I always go with, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Right? It, it works for me. Uh, my gear is pretty easy. I have my signature EMG pickups, which I'm very proud of because uh, the output, it, it, I'm not trying to sell you. I just want, if you want to try them, um, they're, the output on these things is pretty powerful. They're the, the, there's, I call it the punch in your face vibe. Uh, you put them in, like I switched all my, when my, my signature model um, pickups came out, I got a bunch of them in. I switched all my bases to them. I put them in all my bases. The output was, my, my tech Jeff, my tech Jeff just, it was immediate. I love seeing the face like that face. Whoa! It was immediate. The output. It was like, it was literally. It sounds like a punch in your face, and I love that. So, um, specifically for my for our type of music, it it really makes a lot of sense. So, um, if you're into that, you can try the AMG pickups. Uh, and and uh, Diadario strings. You know, I'm still using. Uh, and everything. I don't. <clears throat> I don't really go anywhere else because if it's working. You know, I'll try, I'll always try, I'm always trying new pedals. I love new pedals, always. I love experimenting. But uh, as far as basses uh, and, and that kind of stuff, um, you know, I have, I have a lot of different kinds of basses in this, in this basement, base, forget it, okay. in this basement. You, I have to give you credit for that one. <laughs> but uh, there's, there's a whole plethora. I have a great a bunch of Fenders. I have a, a, my old school Fender ones, which is awesome. Uh, and and I I just, I go back, I have my Steve Harris model. One of my favorite models is a Steve Harris uh, Fender signature model that I, I got a bunch of years ago. And it's still, it, and I've tried Steve's basses. Uh, it really compares to his basses. It's really pretty identical to the basses because I'm still, I'm a diehard Iron Maiden fan. So I still go over with Steve's bass parts and and it's still it really is identical to what he what he has, and uh, so I, I, I play that bass a lot. It's, it's a great flat wound string. I don't, I, you know, I can't use the flat wound for anthrax. It doesn't cut through, <laughs> but um, I love them. Made in. I tried. I remember. I'll tell you a quick story. Uh, we've toured a lot with Iron Maiden. I love them. They're one of my favorite bands. Great friends of ours. Um, we're, we're like family with them. Uh, Michael Kenny hit Steve's tech. I was I was nosing around Steve's gear as, as I do because I'm a, I'm a student I just want to learn and I just you know all that stuff what how does the magic work how does the magic work so I'm just snooping around there and Michael sees me and he goes you want to try it he gave me the nod to go try it this is a sound before sound check so I was like ah! I was that kid I was that 13 year old kid so, yeah I can't wait. so he puts it he puts the strap on me he says, that bass is heavier than I thought man Steve's I mean that's a heavier bass and he put it up. Just regular volumes, re Steve's regular volume. I couldn't believe actually how loud it was. I was intimidated by the volume because I went back. I was going, that's how loud it is. I said, yeah, that's his volume. He, Michael goes, that's his volume. I said, it's incredible. So I, I right away, I'm, just, I'm playing every Iron Maiden lick I know because nobody's in the audience yet or anything. So I'm doing um, you know, every everything he's in, Killers. I'm doing everything. It's, it's just a lot of fun. Frank, the, the little kid, was trying his hero's bass. So it was that moment, if you could put yourself in that mindset, mm -hmm. it was so cool. And so it, it felt like I was in my bedroom playing an Iron Maiden song with Steve's gear. It was so cool, man. It was it was surreal. And that's so uh, yeah, cool because you've got to do that the other way. You've done that for a little. That's the idea. You see how it works, how you pay it back. You pay it back and, it, and you know, pay it forward and and it it'll make somebody's day. You know what I mean? I want people to feel, I think it's important to make people feel good in this life. That's just the way I, that's where I'm, I'm, I'm at right now. That's where I'm at. Um, I, I just have a fun time doing it. I remember one more story. Um, it's in the book. I, I'm, I'm shamelessly promoting the book, but I don't mean to, but this is just stories <laughs> out of my life. I remember we toured oh, with uh, Motorhead quite a lot in our lives, Anthrax. Um, and I, I'm a fan, so I'll just stay on the side of the stage for sound checks of the bands, right? So I'm at the you know the monitor board uh, for Motorhead, I watch their songs. See, they they do different songs. It was great to hear. So <clears throat> I'm friends with Lemmy, rest his soul. I love Lemmy. So I'm watching him, and I'm just watching the way he picks. I'm just trying to learn from you know the masters. I want to learn the right way to do this, right? And I'm watching, it, and I see him. His picks up there on on the stand, but he's playing with a different pick, right? He's playing with a different, it's a different style pick. So he sees me staring. He sees me. They stop the song. You know, if the song finishes, he looks over. Come here. 
I'm Frank, the little kid. All of a sudden, I, yeah, I was. We were playing with Anthrax, but all of a sudden, when he says "come here," it's still Lemmy summoning me over to him, right on the stage. I'm like, "What? What's up?" He goes, yeah. "So," <laughs> I go over to him. He puts his bass on me because he knows I want to try it. I'm drooling, you know. <laughs> I it, it's my dream, right? He knows. He, he's smart enough. God rest his soul. He was. He's smart enough. So. I, had, I always say this because it's a great story for me. So he goes, go, right? He just go. He wants me to go. He wants me to try the So there's no, nobody else is playing. So it's just the bass. He turns it up all the way. I turn, it's on 10, right? The, the bass is ready to go. And you ever see the movie going uh, back to the future? You ever seen the movie, the beginning scene with the big speaker where Michael J. Fox plays that and he's blown away? Well, that was me. I tried an open E chord on the bass, right? Just an open E, right? And I swear to God, I took three, two to three steps. Whoa! I took, honestly, taking two to, it was so loud and the power. And it made me, it instilled this, I don't know, this whole vibe for me. It's like, how great is this man that he has that power going? He's singing the show. This is the, the power of Lemmy right here. And I, I'm telling you, I, I was that little kid again. I was that little kid in my room imagining this stuff to happen and it actually came true it was one of the highlights of my life and and we all miss lemmy god rest his soul again another thing he taught me you know then he goes he goes use this and he gives me a pick out of his pocket he has different picks that he played with that with that were that were on the stand that he threw out so cool right i still have that pick in my room you know just as a fan it's the it's one of those great times that i'm fortunate enough to have in my memory bank uh that through all the touring we've done, it's just, these are very special times for me, you know, Yeah. all this stuff's in the book. So uh, I'm glad, I'm glad we did the book, you know, I'm glad we did the book because it, it brought back a lot of these great things that can easily be forgotten unless you trigger them in your mind, you know, you mm-hmm. could just have them there, but unless something, something sparks it, it's, uh, it's not there. And with, with great thing that Joel did, he really sparked up a lot of good stuff. He, a lot of great info. He did a lot of great background stuff. And uh, so he was able to pull a lot of great stuff that I, I completely just forgot. And once it started up again, oh, yeah, and then this happened and you, you keep going on. It's, it was so cool. So cool. Oh, brilliant. Well, we should all check out that book. It's out now. It's called uh, Father, Brother and Sons. And it's all yeah, about, it's um, all about. You can get it on Amazon pre-order and Rare, Rare Bird Lit. It's, uh, you can get it. Go to, go to my website. You can get it. It's no big deal. But it's on Amazon also. So it's all good. Pre-orders. Exactly. And check out what's happening new with Antrax at Antrax.com. All right, Frank, thanks so much for being with us today. Alan, this went fast. Thanks. I, I had a great time with you. <laughs>